so today we're going to talk about um, APIs in the context of mobile apps. Um, so just to give you a little background about what we're doing at Applegem, we are we're a team of engineers and designers, and we're building mobile apps for big French companies. Um, and as you guys know, um, most, if not all, mobile apps are using APIs. Um, just take like the top ranking on the App Store, you'll find Twitter, Facebook, whatever. They all use an HTTP API. Um, so obviously we've dealt with a lot of APIs, and sometimes it was good, but very often there were some weird errors um, that were done in building the API we were using. So I'm gonna give you seven steps to build a better API for mobile clients. <coughs> So step one. Step one is pretty basic, but many people don't do that. You have to compress your data. I mean, it's just as stupid as this, but if you don't zip your contents, then it will be like 10 times bigger, which means 10 times slower for a mobile device. And it, I, I took two samples. So the first sample is um, a sample J JSON file from json.org, and the second one is a sample from the iTunes API. Um, as you can see, the, the, the compression rate is really huge. It can be like to up to a 10x factor. So um, think about it this way. Uh, you're, you're building a, a mobile app for whichever iTunes API, and instead of waiting one second, you're gonna wait 10 seconds. So really zip your content. Okay, step two. Step two is, is a bit trickier. Um, you must do everything you can to avoid n plus one requests. So here, here is a simple case. Uh, imagine, let's imagine you're building a Twitter, a Twitter app. Um, what you'll want to do at some point is display um, a timeline of statuses. And here's what you'll have to do. You'll have to make an API call to retrieve statuses. And here you have two options. Option one is your, the API endpoint will give you everything you need to, to actually build the UI. So you'll just make one request. That is the good case. Now the bad case, which unfortunately happens quite a lot, is the, um, the, top, the top level API doesn't provide you with everything you need. So let's imagine, for example, that in the um, statuses API, you, you don't get, I don't know, um, maybe the timestamp of the tweets. You just get the title of the tweet, the content, but there is no timestamp. So if you want to display that UI with how long ago each tweet was posted, then you'll have to make one extra request per tweet. So here we have, um, okay, I displayed maybe five tweets, so that would be six requests. But imagine the list is bigger, then instead of one request, you would, you would end up making maybe 10, 20, 50 requests. Um, and this is a big problem because making one request implies a bit of overhead. So um, who here is familiar with the HTTP protocol? Okay, excellent, so that's about maybe 50% of, of the people here. So um, for those who are, I mean, that should be obvious to you guys, but for those who aren't, um, sending, establishing a new HTTP connection requires sending packets back and forth that are pretty much useless. So the fewer requests you can make, the better. Um, okay, so think about this. When you, when you make top level APIs, like master APIs about, um, which will, um, reply a list, you have to at least provide an option to retrieve as many infos as possible. Let's go for step three. Okay, step three mi might seem obvious, but actually it's a bit tricky, and we've seen tons of examples of this. So really pay attention. Um, step three is no HTML in your API. Um, what does that mean? L I'm assuming we are talking about a JSON API, but that also applies for XML or whatever. Um, the, the, the aim of an API is to provide content, not, not to display content. So if you're, that, that's an, an API, a simple API for, let's say, um, an article or a blog post or whatever. Um, all, the, all those three lines have, have what I would say are errors, but, so step one is just pure HTML markup. So if, if, if it is a title, then you, you, you should see it because it's a title attribute, not by putting 
uh, header level one markup in, in the content. Step two, um, the second item is a bit trickier. Um, you may at some point want to, to use links in your content and well, don't do that with HTML. Uh, what you should do maybe is, is have a, a fourth attribute with l uh, interesting links or, or something like that, but by using HTML, um, you, your clients will have to use a full-fledged HTML parser, which can be really expensive. I mean, if you're on the web, that's okay, because obviously all your clients are already in, in a browser context, but on mobile, that would imply creating a, a web view, and web views are really expensive. Um, the third one is, is the trickiest one, and we've seen this one a lot. Um, people are using HTML entities to escape content, and I mean, who here knew that um, this was an HTML entity, like the uh, ampersand AMP? Okay, that's about 10% of the crowd. So um, that's, that's a common way to escape uh, weird characters in HTML, but that is, that is absolutely specific to HTML. So if you're, if you're writing JSON content, then don't use HTML entities. You can escape content the JSON way. If you're writing XML, then escape your weird characters the XML way, but don't mix things up. Um, yeah, and last but not least, if, if you really want HTML, then just serve HTML. Don't wrap it into a JSON or XML format. Um, yeah, your, your, your clients will be able to parse HTML. So if you want HTML, go HTML. Otherwise, don't. Step four. Step four is not really mobile specific, but yeah, th that can be a pain. Um, you have to use descriptive errors. When you're building your API, you don't know who's going to use it in the end, and and the third-party user or developer might, will probably spend hours and hours debugging his his or her code if you don't provide him with explicit errors. Um, okay, I, I wrote an example at, at the bottom. This one is a good example because you made a request and it tells you exactly what's going, what's wrong. It tells you, okay, I'm missing that parameter. Um, the, bad ex the bad version would be an API that, re that replies error and that's it. So when you're building your app, you will spend a lot of time figuring out what was wrong because there are many, many parameters, setting authentication, whatever that could be wrong. So really, yes, when you build an API, think about it, use descriptive errors. And for, I said for developers, but for end users, it's very important as well. Because um, when something goes wrong, you'll want to notice users. And if you, if you just pop up something which says error, then it's, it's not gonna help developers, of course, but it's not gonna be helpful for users as well. So you really want to have explicit uh, error message that can be displayed, and you should ideally you should localize them. Okay, um, number five is very very important for mobile. Um, I'm going to talk about pictures. Um, okay, um, l let's take the Twitter example for example, or the Twitter app for example. Um, in a Twitter app, you'd want you you will want probably at some point to display a small thumbnail for each user. Uh, and this thumbnail will be asked to the API. Um, but the thing is, there are, ideally, there should be different versions of the same thumbnail depending on where and how you're going to use it. So if you're drawing a timeline, you'll probably want to uh, load a small thumbnail. If you're showing maybe a, a user page, you'll want a larger version. Here you have two options. Op the simple option is to always serve the largest image you have. That does work, but it is painfully slow. So imagine your users are like in Subway or somewhere with poor connectivity. Um, if you're serving the highest definition version all the time, that will mean that maybe they, it will take 15 minutes to load the timeline, which is of course unacceptable. Um, here are, there are several versions, several ways to overcome this issue. Um, first, first way is to serve in your text API different URLs for different resolution of the image. Um, oh crap, <laughs> I 
Okay, so I said background and background. It's actually background HD in the, in the third line. Um, that does work, but it's not very flexible because you're uh, you're hard coding the, diff the the resolution. What if what if at some point I want a super low resolution, or what if someone at the opposite want a huge resolution? It it doesn't scale well. So what what I would recommend is having a dynamic version where you you return an, an identifier in your text API, and this identifier is used to build an URL with a a random a random resolution. So it it can work with whatever resolution the client is expecting. And yeah, that is very, very important for mobile because um, you, we have many devices to handle. Some of them are very, are, have very, very tiny screens, so we can optimize the bandwidth because with, uh, by loading smaller resolution images. And at the opposite, we have some devices with quite a high resolution, and sometimes they're on Wi-Fi, so it would be nicer to load a higher resolution image. Okay, excellent. So here's, um, that's a simpler one. Um, when you're building an API, you should really, really avoid redirections. Um, it, it's gonna be transparent on the web because most web clients handle resolutions. It, sh it will work on mobile because of course there's a way to follow redirections, but they are really inefficient. Um, here I put a small diagram. Um, let's imagine your customer your client wants to retrieve a, a resource named home, so he will do a get on slash home URL. And here your server, instead of actually providing the client with the content, is gonna reply a redirect. So that means <coughs> that, means that the, there are actually uh, two more steps than necessary. And like I said before, uh, each step is very expensive because you, have, you may have to do a, another DNS resolution. You, probably will have to do an, a new TCP connection and all this for nothing. And given how expensive or scarce the bandwidth is on mobile, really uh, you should avoid it. And here is my last recommendation is, this one is a bit weird, um, but we've seen it more often than we should, so I'm sharing it with you guys. Um, you should avoid time-based tokens or in general anything time-based. Um, here is a sample request we had to make to use um, an API. Um, and we had tons of issues with this. The, fir the first and biggest issue was that actually m most mobile devices aren't properly configured and their time is off, sometimes by five minutes, sometimes by five years. So there's, it's not reliable. I mean, yeah, we initially thought that ev everyone's phone was on time, but it's, it's, it's not. So, <coughs> so really um, av avoid doing anything time-based. If, if you want to prevent um, replaying requests, then you should use a nonce mechanism like there is in OS. So just do that if you want to prevent people replaying your request. So here is our conclusion. Um, definitely mobile devices are, are high maintenance. I mean, they are harder to work with. So if you build your API thinking about mobile, then it will, it will benefit everyone because, um, well, who, who can do the most can do, can do less. So that's it. <laughs>
so that, that's a good question. Um, uh, I, I believe that if, it, it depends on the mobile app you're targeting actually. So let's take Twitter for example. I, I'm, I don't know whether they built their, a, their API for mobile first or, or they, they just built it to have an API. But um, let's imagine you're building a Twitter app. You'll probably cover the whole spectrum of the Twitter API. And turns out this API can be used for pretty much anything else. So if, if you're building your API for a, a big mobile app, so for an app that will use all of your service, then I think it's a good use case in, in the sense that, well, it will let end users do pretty much whatever your service can provide. Okay, and to your mind, what are the, the, the biggest stress that makes the design really, really difficult and how to avoid it? For mobile, for the API for mobile. Yeah, th that's a good question. Uh, actually, you know, uh, we are learning by example, and and it, it's pretty hard to come up with a set of rules. I mean, I I tried to to bring up a few of them, but we just discovered them as they were coming. So maybe the best way is to to have some level of agility and being able to evolve pretty rapidly when whenever you notice something that's wrong. And okay. Yeah, and ev I mean, we, we've dealt with honestly crappy APIs, but as long as you have API, an API, th that's okay. I mean, end users, well, third party developers can work around your poorly designed API and they will give you some feedback and tell you, okay, this, nah, it wasn't so good. We managed to build something anyway. So, I mean, as long as you have a conversation with people using your API, you should be okay. Okay, I understand. Any question on mobile APIs? Yeah. <laughs> Two arms up. So. <laughs> Maybe two questions. Um, you were talking about image resolution. Uh -huh. um, how do you, s you say you're going to serve the identifier, but how do you serve the different uh, formats and the CDN or the sizes? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, do you use the uh, user agent or something else? So um, actually, it, it might be a bit, um, it might not be possible to serve arbitrary resolution, but the real thing is people will use a, a large set of, of predefined resolutions. So what you could do basically is, yeah, you, you have to, to use the resolution in the URL. So it's just as simple as that. You, you, you make a big pack of like, let's say 100 versions of the same picture, put that on your CDN and you're good to go. Right. That's the simple version. If you want to have a full dynamic version, then of course it will be order. But I, I think that's the safe way to do it. We have time for one last question. There it is. Hi, uh, just a question Hi. because you speak about optimization of um, mobile apps. Uh, is there any consequences to use HTTPS with an API? And will you, uh, I mean, um, what is the consequence if uh, every app uses HTTPS? Is, uh, is it difficult or not? Yeah, th that's a good question. Um, actually, yeah, th there is a cost of using HTTPS because of course you're doing encryption. Um, our experience here is that actually the, the load is harder to handle on the server because Im imagine, in, in general, I mean, mobile devices these days, they are somewhat powerful anyway, so they can handle HTTPS without any trouble. Um, it might not be the case for your server because if you have 10 million devices out there hitting your API, um, that can be trickier. So um, don't really worry about mobile clients, but worry about your server. Yeah, good advice. <laughs> Th thank you, Romain. Thank You're you. Welcome.